everyone, I'm Allie with Potomac Beads, and today's Better Beater episode is going to be on the endless question of how to store your supplies and your beads. I have seen amazing pictures of people's home studios, that they have amazing setups showing exactly what beads they're using, walls of delicas lined up by item number shelving systems that keep everything in order, boxes that were specifically made, husbands that are woodworkers. But the average person, how do you actually store your beads, your materials, and your projects while you're working with them? How do you store them when you're in flight or when you're traveling? How do you work with the overwhelming amount of small things that are accompanied with beading? So I thought I would go into the details of how I store things that I'm working on, how I store things that I have, and the different types of storage that I use. The number one thing that we here at Potomac Bead Company love is tubes. So one thing that we do that a lot of other companies don't is most of our beads actually come in tubes. This is not the most cost effective. It definitely is not the most cost effective and it does not make the most uh, financial sense when it comes to the actual labor intensiveness of putting things in tubes. So why do we put things in tubes? Because personally, I love tubes. I hate having things in bags. What ends up happening is that the bag opens, things spill all over, and then you don't actually have the opportunity to store your beads. You end up taking a lint roll, rolling it along your bead mat and giving up and throwing some away. I don't want beads to be wasted, so I like the tubes. Not only that, but the tube has the name on it, it has what kind of bead it is, has the price on it, so that way if you do go back and um, check it out, you know exactly what the color number is, what the name is, what the item number is to search for it so you can easily find those beads and find those things that you need. In addition to the tubes, the in addition to beads, the tubes are also great storage for, say, my needles. So if I wanna put my needles into something, I can put them in a tube. The other thing that we do have for needle storage is the needle wooden case, super inexpensive. These are really cool because people do make peyote covers for them and covers for the wooden needle case. I should do a video on that. I just know that if I take the time to do a video on the case, I will, I will lose it um, because I am a little unorganized when it comes to my beads. So this video is also helpful for me. But a lot of people will put wooden needle cases and they'll write the size of the bead on the out or the needle on the outside. So a 10, a 12. A lot of times I'll take the empty tube and actually put in the exterior um, packaging of the needle so I know what I'm doing. So I like to reuse the tubes and recycle the tubes. I'll often also take strands of beads and actually put them in the tubes as well. And then if you have the little Avery, they're 82 a sheet, little stickers, you can actually put in there what your beads are. So if I have this Labradorite strand, I could dump that into the tube. The other thing that I love about the tube is that it's see-through. So you can actually see the colors that you're going to be using. When I have most of my tubes, I have at home an entire shoe box full. These shoe boxes, um, if you ever go to the Target near here, they're never in stock because we buy them all by however many they have on the shelf. But we store almost everything here. So this is some um, Potomac Crystal baguettes um, that I stole off the wall. And we store everything in these tubes because they're super cost effective. Again, clear, easily see-throughable. So I keep at my house all my 11 O's in one tub that you can see them right away. And because they're in the clear case, as you can see them. Now we do have stackable jars that we sell whether or not you want the by the two by five and two quarters or if you want the 2.7 by four. So there's all different stacking things that you can get. Also there's scoops that you can use to help you organize the beads. There's actual scoopies that you can use to help you pick up the beads from your mat. I really find the most beneficial thing is that shoebox 
that I label on the outside clearly what beads are inside and I organize them based on the bead brand. That's something that you might not know, but I put all of my Potomac exclusive, they all have their own individual bins. So I have a bin of just round duo beads, a bin of just iris duo beads and all those different tubes. Then I have another bin that I have labeled on the outside for all of my Parpuka products. So anything that is an Arcos, a Minos, I have those in one bin together. Inside of the bin, I often have larger quart size plastic bags that I'll keep all of those things in. I like also that you can kind of stand up the tubes in the bags and that way they're easier to look and easier to reference and easier to see. Please recycle your tubes and use them for something else. Like I said, they can always be used for something else. In addition to beads and tubes that we have in the clear storage containers, I like to keep little tiny plastic containers. This one is from a camera battery and I use these a lot for travel. So I'll use these to travel and to travel with my projects. I'll put a project that I'm working for into the tube. You can also, we sell just lids for these because you can break them down and you don't have to have them all in one unit. These are great, but think about the products that you have around the house that you can recycle. I know a lot of people will use um, kind of pill bottles and things like that to keep projects in. I like it if it's completely clear. That's kind of my thing. If I start putting things into tins or into cute little mint containers, I lose them and I don't know what's in there. So it's kind of like my husband says with the leftovers in the fridge, if they're not in a clear container, they will not be eaten because nobody's going to look inside. Same with my beads, things get lost if they're not in clear containers. So I'm a very big advocate for recycling, recycling tubes, recycling containers and working with clear rather than something that is completely covered up. As I'm working, I will generally have seed beads out and around my mat. I usually have seed beads out and around my mat in little cups. So these are ramen king cups. We used to have tons of beading shelves that we put these in to sell individual beads. I use this for scrap wire if I'm working with wire. I'll put my beads into here and the different kinds and then I'll resort them out later. I put the different projects that I'm working in. So I kind of have these sitting all over my work area and my work studio. In addition to that, I have bead mats. I actually take the bead mats and my suggestion would be to actually cut these bead mats. I put them sometimes on top of my bead on it boards and have them there. But if you cut the bead mats, you can also slide an entire project into itself. Also, if you use little lunch trays or serving trays, we have black trays here at Potomac Beads that we actually use to gather your orders in. That's great that you can cut a mat in half, slip the mat on, and then you can stack them really, really nicely on top of one another and keep project inside project inside project. Really inexpensive way to do so and an inexpensive way to store your beads and to store your finished products. The other thing that you need to think about storing is actually your thread, your wire, your cording, all of that. So I have here some different thread and to show you what I would do. Number one, biggest mistake that I made when I started doing some more stringing and some more wire working. Number one is when you get to your wire or your cording, they have on a clear little band. Don't throw this away. Not only does that keep it from coming off on the shelf or in transportation, but this little piece that goes click on it actually keeps it together and keeps it from unraveling off the actual spool. Keep them after you finish your spool too. Sometimes they will snap and they will break. So keep it so you always have an extra to work with in case you can't find it. I actually can tell right away this one doesn't actually fit on here perfectly, but it's still working, which means it came from something else because I probably lost this one or put it away because it's clear. Keep those little casing covers because that's going to help you to make sure that you're keeping your wire or your spooling together. When you have a thread that doesn't actually have a little stop to it or doesn't have that casing cover to it, if you look on the spool of the thread, it generally will have a little section where you can kind of finish it off. Finish that off and then also if you can't get the whole way around, this is my little pet peeve, I could go one more way around and I still have a little tail. The tail is not crazy big. If you have a tail that's really big, cut it down or wrap it around again. That's going to keep you from fraying. With these, again with the bobbins, I tend to actually keep them in plastic bags 
because that way in case that does come apart it doesn't fray for it so with all my different threads and things I actually keep them in one bin that I keep all of my threads in one bin and then my beading wire another thing that you get is you're actually going to get spools of wire wire with these a fun little tool is actually use a twister tie you can use a twister tie or a rubber band the twister tie you can roll this up and put a twister tie around the edge of the wire that way you don't damage any of your wire if you're using an art wire spool what you can do is use a rubber band and put a rubber band around that since it doesn't come often with the little clear coating casing to go around it when you're talking about metal beads and how to store metal beads, how to store high-end gemstones, how to store crystals, you may wanna think about making sure that you label the actual containers. So here at Potomac Beads, when we have our metals in the actual containers, we label the outside exactly what it is. It's gonna be important that sterling silver stays separate from silver plated because the sterling silver you wanna keep airtight. So that way it doesn't get really, really tarnished. I mark the outside of the containers with Sharpie marker saying exactly what is inside of it. The number one key to actually keeping everything organized, in my opinion, is labeling everything. Keeping everything in clear containers, labeling everything, and making sure that it's easily accessible for what you need. The other key is actually sticking to the organization process. When it comes to organizing your jewelry and your finished products, how do you organize those? With those, any ideas that I have or finished products, I generally keep in a bag. And I do this because that way I can see the product. It doesn't get damaged, it doesn't get twisted up, but I actually prefer to keep my projects in plastic bags. And then, so like I have the Anytime necklace here. When I'm not wearing it, I'll put it in a plastic bag and then I have a whole container of necklace ideas. And I organize them based on dates that they were published. So if I'm not wearing it, I have it based on the date that it was published or the date that I made it or some way of classifying things. But I still literally take and keep all of this thing in these clear shoe bin tubs. You can get them in different sizes. They don't need to be that way, but those are really cost effective. They're less than a dollar, easy way to store. Go to your dollar store, go to Walmart, go to Target, look for inexpensive storage options and go for there. When I was younger, I kept all my beads separated in a tackle box. You also have those bead embroidery boxes that come. I had those, those are disastrous in my mind because all the separators can come out. You tip it over and things actually come out the top of it. So unless you know that there's no way that it's gonna get knocked over, I try to avoid the actual little bead boxes and I go with individual containers that I can close off the lids keep my tubes and recycle my tubes, and then also utilize some small plastic bags. We actually sell the small plastic bags for the different size of uh, jewelry making, so that way we can kind of pass them off if people wanna do the same thing, because I do enjoy putting my set of earrings into that. When I travel and I go on a plane, again, I like to keep kind of those small containers, even the ultra suede containers that are a little bit bigger. Keep those plastic containers to put your projects in and to make them easily accessible if you're traveling. I also use a cosmetic case for traveling. That way I'll put all of my tools into a cosmetic case. If I know that I'm going on a plane, I don't take any tools with me. I just take my uh, snip and slip scissors, which are really tiny, and I put those into the fold out cosmetic case and work with just the essentials beading for that. Kind of have a travel case that I move along with me and work along with me. Now, does this answer every question that you have about storage? No. So in the comments in this Better Beater video, I want you to share how you organize your beads. My method is not gonna be the best method for Sue, and Sue's method is not gonna be the best method for Barb, and Barb's method is not going to work for me. Everybody has their own ways of organization, but the most important thing is to label and to make sure that you have everything easily identifiable. When you finish a tube of beads, you wanna know what that color number is or what that color name is, so that way you can order more if you liked it. If you don't like it and you say this came a different color, you may have used it up anyway, you wanna know that you don't like it, so mark that onto the tube some way as well. Mark the projects that you're working on or the actual supplies for a video on the outside with a label in a clear container saying what you're working on. Again, let us know how you organize, how you stay 
very organized with all of these multitude of different beading supplies, especially if you do wire working and bead embroidery, as well as basic stringing, you have a multitude of things. I opened up our first Potomac Bead Company location with my personal collection of beading supplies with just adding a few things. So I know where you're coming from with that headache of how to organize and how to have everything in its place and easily accessible. Again, please comment below. Let us know how you're organizing, what the best tips that you've learned, the best tricks that you've learned to help others in that same way. You'll learn from each other in addition from learning and hopefully picking up some new techniques and some new tips here as well. Keep in mind you can also subscribe to this YouTube channel to get these regular updates of the Better Beater videos, the different design videos that we do, and the updates that we show for the weekend and really the design aspects in every facet of the actual process of jewelry making. As always, thank you so much for watching this Better Beater video. Hopefully it was very informative to you. And if you need any storage supplies or any beads, feel free to shop with us online at potomacbeads.com as well as potomacbeads.eu. Enjoy all of your beads, keep them organized, and we'll see you next time.